Hello and welcome to another Chai Tutors video. In today's video we're going to be unpacking the poem The Discardment by Alan Patton. So firstly, a little bit of information about our poet so that we can understand the context of the poem better. He was a South African writer who lived between 1903 and 1988. He was an anti-apartheid activist and he was involved in politics by resisting the National Party. He wrote the famous novel Cry the Beloved Country, which was published in 1948. Interestingly, 1948 was the year that apartheid officially started, with the National Party being elected into power. So let's have a look at our title, The Discardment. So discardment, to discard means to throw something away, Discardment is the noun or form of that word. It is something that is no longer valuable that you would like to get rid of. It is not specified what this particular item is. What's important to know about this item is only the fact that it is not valuable anymore and that it needs to be thrown out. This sort of lack of specificity regarding the item can also link to the fact that this might be a universal poem, can apply to many different people's contexts, but at the same time, the use of just the word discardment instead of actually specifying what the item is just emphasizes that the only thing important to know about this in reading the poem and understanding the message of the poem is the fact that it is no longer needed, it is a sort of useless, valueless item. The use of the is quite interesting because it's a definite article um, and so this can maybe speak to the fact that, that the speaker is reflecting on a specific incident where this discardment was given over and received this reaction. So we can understand this title as being important in our unpacking of the message as we go through the poem. We gave her the discardment. We gave her a discardment, a trifle, a thing no longer to be worn, its purpose served, its life done. She put it on with exclamations, her eyes shone, she called and cried, the great bulk of her pirouetted. She danced and mimed, sang snatches of a song, she called out blessings in her native tongue, called to her fellow servants, to strangers and passers-by, to all the continent of Africa, to see this wonder, to participate in this intolerable joy. So the first stanza starts off with we, an inclusive first person pronoun, and we can understand that this poem is from the perspective of this rich white family. Her refers to this African domestic worker or servant who is not as rich as the white family she works for. The pronouns indicate a sense of division between these two groups of people, even though obviously the domestic worker is in the singular, and it really emphasizes how they're going to have differing perspectives on caring for or with regard to this discardment. A discardment has really negative connotations. It's no longer wanted or needed. It's a meaningless thing. It's useless. It's to be thrown away. It's not a specific item here, the detail is unimportant and the lack of detail emphasizes how the speaker who is from the white family does not care about the item at all. It isn't important what the thing is, but rather how it shows inequality in the races through the servant's reaction to this thing that the white family is merrily discarding. A trifle, a thing no longer to be worn, so a trifle means something insignificant or unimportant, a thing no longer, the white family has no use for it to be worn. The listing of the ways in which this thing is useless emphasizes how useless this item is in the sense that there's nothing that would be a good use for this item. It's purpose served, it's life done. Those three lines end with this full stop. The idea that this item has come to an end in terms of its worth to this rich family and that full stop signifies now a change because now we're going to see a contrast, a contrast to what the domestic worker is going to think about this item that she has just been given. 
we are now going to see her overreaction to this gift in inverted commas because it's really not a gift it's more of an item that has just been given the first few lines build up this idea that the discardment is useless and meaningless and then the reaction is indicative of how this object really doesn't matter what it is as we spoke about earlier it can be viewed from two vastly different perspectives the rich family versus the poor servant she put it on with exclamations exclamation means great excitement excited cheers her eyes shone here we have the imagery of her eye shining emphasizes her elation she called and cried the alliteration of that harsh c sound showcases how her excitement is vocal and loud the great bulk of her pirouetted dancing is a symbol of joy it's gleeful it's elated she danced and mimed sang snatches of a song she called out blessings in her native tongue she and she are the start of those lines that anaphora the repetition of a word or phrase at the start of subsequent lines emphasizes how many joyous reactions she shows she shows her joy in a multitude of ways um she is jubilant danced as we said has really positive connotations also notice how it's talking danced mimed sang called these are actions that um, people do when they're joyous it shows that joy has overtaken her entire sort of way about her that the way that she's acting is so joyous she's not just feeling it but she's acting on it this sang snatches the alliteration of the sibilant sound there emphasizes the joy and it mimics the sound of a song we have this like mood of joyousness um of jubilation it's almost like this um this domestic worker she is ecstatic about this gift once again in inverted commas um in her native tongue in her mother tongue um if you just think about when you're really excited about something you automatically will go to your mother tongue language to express that joy so this really emphasizes her joy she's talking away she's so appreciate appreciative and excited that even she incite or she alludes to some sort of prayer in sort of co in, in her way of calling out blessings called to her fellow servants called is repeated her joy is continuous it keeps going and growing to her fellow servants why did she call to her fellow servants because they would understand her joy they would um, understand her jubilation at receiving this discardment and here the next three lines all start with two so once again an aphora which emphasizes the extent of the joy and so many people are now involved in her joy this is such a momentous occasion to strangers and passers-by everyone must share in this joy to all the continent of africa this is an example of hyperbole it's an over exaggeration um that everyone in africa would be aware of this but the the use of africa as the continent obviously is significant because we know of we know africa sort of connotes this idea of the gap or the disparity between the rich and the poor being quite extreme in africa and so we are using that sort of allusion to really drive home well not we but the speaker is using that allusion to drive home that message of disparity and inequality to see this wonder to see this wonder that's also hyperbolic and it's ironic because this is not a wonder at all this is a discardment that she has just received this is not something so you know to that should elicit such jubilation it is not a wonder it is the receiving of a discardment to participate in this intolerable joy so to participate in this intolerable joy notice the enjambment there the enjambment showing the continuation of this elation and this celebration but intolerable joy is a really important line to understand and i'm sure when they ask you this poem they will probably ask you something along about this line so if you think about intolerable joy it is a form of an oxymoron an oxymoron is when you have two words next to each other that are completely opposite um and so we can understand this as an oxymoron because if something's intolerable it means it's unable to be endured it's unbearable it's it's you know insufferable it it can't be um it can't be sort of accepted it's intolerable yet joy was signifies signifies joy and happiness and usually you want to prolong joy and happiness so you can understand why this doesn't make sense automatically why it's an oxymoron it's a form of contradiction and we can understand this in two ways in the simple sense it's that she is so excited by this gift 
that she can hardly bear it. Once again, that gift in inverted commas. But on the other hand, we can see a more deeper message. And this oxymoron comments on the irony that this discardment is bringing the servant so much joy and it's coming from the rich family's garbage. It's unbearable to witness this form of overreaction to the receiving of this discardment. And so for nothing is purchased loyalty and trust and the unquestioning obedience of the earth's most rare simplicity. So for nothing, the destruction of a world. While the first stanza gave us an indication of what this item meant to the rich family versus to the poor servant, in the second stanza we now have a reflection on how the giving of this worthless item, this nothing, has earned the family trust and loyalty and respect from the servant. And so for nothing, the use of nothing really shows what the discardment actually truly is. The discardment secures a valuable thing even though it is worth nothing. It emphasizes the theme of the disparity between the rich and the poor and the fact that the nothing is as purchased loyalty and trust is paradoxical. It doesn't seem to make sense of how something so insignificant can yield so much or something so deep and so um, powerful in exchange. Purchased, this is used ironically because nothing has actually been purchased, nothing has actually been bought. But in exchange, what has happened is the, um, the rich family has given over this discardment to the servant and the servant has repaid her them, even though that's something paradoxical. Why should she repay them for, you know, giving away something that they were going to throw away? Um, but she has given them this loyalty and this trust. These are very major things, very important or very significant ideas to gain, especially in exchange for something so insignificant. And the unquestioning obedience. Unquestioning obedience, such a dangerous sort of grouping of words, because unquestioning is like you don't question anything, you just go along with something. And obedience is when you're following orders. So this is this complete and utter trust that's been earned by a mere discardment. If you think about the reaction of joy elation and the unquestioning obedience that is mentioned here, it's almost innocent, vulnerable, even somewhat childlike because of its sense of naivety. It can, it sort of indicates that um, the rich family is able to take advantage of this servant and that is incredibly, you know, unfortunate and troubling. Of the earth's most rare simplicity, most rare simplicity, simplicity, what is the earth's most rare simplicity? I suppose you can think of this in different ways. My interpretation would be the sense of loyalty and trust, this deep bond that has been created between the rich family and the poor servant as a result of this giving over of this discardment that has earned the family so much trust and so much um, love and loyalty. So for nothing, here we have that repetition, just emphasizing this is not a fair trade. This is a depressing, a despairing realization. The destruction of a world. We can understand that line in a number of ways. So a world, what does the world signify? It could be signifying South Africa and how South Africa has been destroyed as a result of this inequality and this disparity between people that Africa itself has been destroyed um, in the sense that people are indoctrinated to expect nothing or to expect less and give over so much more. It could also be talked about a world in terms of black pride and dignity and self-worth. This excessive reaction to something so simple is really troubling. It could also be representative of a world being the world order and What's been destroyed here, the world order of respecting people and ensuring equality and maintaining the dignity of others. The poem is ironic. It is unexpected that a woman would appreciate this worthless item so much. It has a very upsetting message as it shows the disparity and inequality in South Africa. 
the structure of the poem. The first few lines is what the item is to the speaker. The rest of stanza one is this ironic celebration, celebratory reaction. Stanza two is a reflection. The tone and the mood, um, at different points, it's different tones and moods. So we have this ironic and cynical. We also can describe it as joyous at times. And ultimately it's reflective, contemplative and slightly depressing. Well, not slightly depressing, actually really depressing. The theme and the message, inequality, disparity between classes and races. I hope that you found this video helpful in your study of this poem. Please remember to like the video and to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.